Welcome to the Ranking Revolution podcast, your go-to source for strategies and ideas for SEO, organic growth, content creation, and online business. My name is Doug Cunnington, and I'm your host. Today, we're going to chat with Stuart Vickers, also known as SEO Jesus. Like many of the interviews, this is divided up into two parts. In the first part, we're going to talk about his start in SEO. We'll talk a little bit about LinkedIn and Reddit marketing. And in the second part, we'll get into personal branding and YouTube. There's always a little bit of a blend. So if you dig the first part, definitely check out the second part. One thing to note is that Stuart and I recorded this at the end of February of 2024. So it was before the March core update, before the spam update. Some of the things that we talk about around helpful content update and the fact that we don't reference the March update because it had not happened yet. So it's one of those things with me trying to record and bank a bunch of episodes. I couldn't get this stuff out quick enough. And then I caught a cold and it's a whole other story. But the point is, if there are some topics that seem like we should have some more timely information, we didn't have the information at the time that we recorded it in February. So apologies for that. But you could just imagine that Uh, You hopped in a time machine and you heard what we thought before the update rolled out in March. So that's it for now. Be sure to check out Stuart's stuff and let's get to the interview now. Today, I'm pumped to talk to a new friend of mine. He showed up on my radar a few months ago and our, our paths crossed because we're both Otis mentors and I'm really excited to get into some things that I don't know anything about. So this is going to be a little bit of a learning uh, episode for myself as well. We're talking to Stuart Vickers, known as SEO Jesus, which is, it's awesome branding, awesome branding. He is an international SEO speaker, a consultant, and agency owner. He has over five years of experience in SEO, and he transitioned from art history and doing graduate jobs related to insurance marketing to building world-renowned SEO and link building agencies, or one agency, that is. Stewart has been featured on Otis Talks alongside industry titans like Charles Float and Julian Goldie. He's a best-selling author. Try that again. Stewart has been featured on Otis Talks alongside industry titans like Charles Float and Julian Goldie. He's also the best-selling author of the Power Lever Method, featured in Bloomberg and Yahoo Finance, which is pretty amazing. So Stuart, welcome. How's it going today? Good, thank you. And it sounds like you you took a sort of a roundabout path to get into SEO, which I find a, a lot of us kind of did that too. No, no yeah. one uh, went to school for that. So art history, can you just give a, a quick summary of how you ended up transitioning from an art history degree to where you are now. Yeah, I mean, fundamentally, I'd always wanted to be a writer. I was always creative. Didn't really think that was a sustainable career choice. And they do say people who take history of art, it's always that compromise of they didn't really know what they wanted to do. They wanted to be kind of creative, but still kind of academic. And the upshot of that was I got into UCL, which is a world-renowned university, but the contact, contact hours were really small. So I was loving London life, and therefore I was broke. So I was basically looking for any job I could get. Nearly got scouted on the street to do uh, selling double glazing for a commission. Thankfully, saw better of that and ended up working for a basically a men's accessories brand who just wanted a menswear blogger and got an interest in menswear vintage. And they basically said, you know, they liked my writing style, but they basically said, if whilst you're writing this nice blog post, you could use these keywords a few times then that will enable us to rank on Google. You know, currently we're on page five, et cetera. And that blew my mind because it suddenly showed me how uh, my passion for writing, in, in this case, also my passion for menswear, could actually be a foundation within digital marketing, which is, of course, a hugely valuable career. Then sidestepped a little bit when I joined an online magazine startup. That was much more about trying to go viral on Facebook, very buzzfeedy. And then with that, they got into affiliate marketing so I tried to do that on my own website. Again, my interest in vintage and sort of dressing up communities, thinking this brand, they were trying to sell top 10 leather jackets. Well, I thought, why don't I try and do top 10 steampunk corsets and things like that, top 10 goth boots. Still trying to go viral on Facebook. And you get good traffic for around 24 hours. No one really buys anything. 
But six months down the line, I noticed, noticed certain pages were starting to get consistent traffic and drive sales. And that's when it really clicked what SEO actually was. Not just slamming any old keyword into the Yoast box at the bottom of WordPress, thinking I've written about goth boots, we're just putting goth boots. Uh, it's much more about finding out what are people already searching for and just fulfill that. So I applied that to then day job in an insurance company. They're spending 10 grand a month on paid ads, barely making any sales. And actually it was a keyword golden ratio moment at that point. And, and that just took off. Phone started ringing within two weeks. That company is now doing 50 grand a month. Wow. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of cool stories, how people ease into SEO and it's fun to hear a key keyword golden ratio story in the wild. So it actually worked. Totally. So I know there's always, it's always hotly contested in the Facebook group. I've not seen a fight about it quite a while now, but it used to be hotly contested. And yeah, I think what really worked for me was the fact that the copywriters call it your mechanism. If you can come up with a nice catchy name for something, it's far easier for other people to understand. So in my case, as this basically the little graduate, the intern trying to pitch these big CEOs and the chairman about how we can write blog posts and sell insurance policies, they didn't really understand it. But when I said there's this keyword golden ratio, that's then, oh, that's interesting. Let's try that. Um, and it just so happened there were some high value insurance keywords that fulfilled that. Now you could also argue, you could go into Ahrefs and see there were DR zeros on page one and all those metrics, but from a very basic perspective, it fulfilled the formula. Perfect. Great example too, because it makes it really easy. The KGR makes it easy to explain something to a lay person. And then it has a cool name too. And they'll remember it. Like it, they will remember mm -hmm. that branding. So let's get into some of the details of like your link building strategy. And it sounds like, you know, with roughly five years in SEO, can you, I guess, lay the years down so we know how long you have been doing it. So when, when was it when you were at the insurance agency and doing that stuff? And then when did you go out on your own? Yeah, this case of then, I think the, the best thing I ever did for my career was basically playing the side hustle at the same time as the day job and basically leveraging one against the other. So I had that, my own website, the sort of vintage cosplay goth website, I never really made any money when I was finishing university. That was the sense of this one, my startup is going to take off. And then six months down the line, I've run out of money, have to get a day job. Um, but this day job loves the fact that I've done my own thing. I've built it from scratch, done all these different skills, which as you said, you just can't learn anywhere else. And um, not every company is like that, but they really appreciated the fact that uh, I had done it independently and that was exactly what they needed as a small company. But yeah, didn't really get to do any SEO there until probably about two years down the line. By which point I'd been listening to Authority Hacker on my commute, your podcast, various others. And I finally understood it's not about write some random article and spam it across Facebook. It's do your keyword list, write best X for Y and X review 10 times. And I actually did that with a men's grooming website. Uh, originally, I actually wanted to make it more of an e-com site. Uh, so either drop shipping, FBA, something like that. But I thought, let's get the traffic first and then we'll just do an affiliate and then we can provide our own product. And I never did because it turned into a proper website. So I thought the, the, the effort of actually sourcing a unique product from China would just be more than it was worth. Um, so I basically said to the team when we were spending all this money on paid ads and getting nowhere, you know, my little hobby blog that's just been in my spare time is doing really well. We're talking two grand a month plus sometimes. Um, and that's when eventually I said, okay, let's try it. And then two weeks later, phone started ringing. This works. Okay, your job. I'm thinking, great, we can scale up, we can get some writers. They're saying, no, this is your job now, get writing. Oh, man. And so yeah, that company did really well, got headhunted to another big insurance company. And in terms of link building, that was the pivoting point because although I felt like I did my own thing, I still felt quite small at the time in a small insurance company. Going to the big insurance company, they didn't have one SEO agency, they had two. One of them didn't even do link building. And it was fascinating to just watch both these agencies on the calls in terms of what I knew, thinking obviously imposter syndrome, I've just learned from podcasts, these guys are the pros and you see what you're getting and you're thinking paying two grand a month and you've given us three backlinks, which 
totally fail across every quality metric that certainly I've ever heard of. And so, yeah, it was pretty clear. It was pointing me in that direction of, uh, you should go out and do an SEO agency. They, they really tried to accommodate me in that company, tried to give me little pet projects, but with a big corporate machine, I had to you know, man my post, which was basically just managing the WordPress website, uh, even though these sites weren't really getting any traffic. So there was a bit of you know, constructive feedback with my manager and they said, you don't seem very happy. I said, yeah, you know what? I think it's time I just left and started an agency. So doubled down on mainly the link building because I could see that's where the agency was failing. That's where most SEOs really struggle. And I tried it out on my sites, going from the position of uh, fear and scarcity, yet this hype that basically you shouldn't build links or you'll build the wrong links, you get penalized. Whereas actually I found as soon as I started doing it, the traffic just took off. So that's when I realized it doesn't matter how expert you think you are, whether you're a beginner or not, often just going for it and doing it outweighs the downside risk of just not doing it in the first place. So that's when I thought we can scale this. Perfect. And I think, you know, a lot of people that are listening to this show, they're more on the, you know, professional side, but I know my other show and just YouTube in general, there's a lot of people just getting started and people are very frightened to like take a chance and like even any small amount of risk, they don't do it and they don't, they don't learn anything. So they just... I, I mean, I guess they kind of passively wait, wait around for some update to hit them and then maybe they take a little action. So you were listening to podcasts for a few years and then, you know, you learned on the job and picked up a lot of skills. Did you have like some mentors inside the, the companies that were teaching you certain things or was it mostly like self-study as far as SEO goes? It was other way around. <laughs> yeah, I do don't want to blow my own trumpet or anything, but um, yeah, this agency would be saying, yeah, I'd say, are you paying for these links? And they'd say, no, no, it's a content exchange. I'd say, well, it's, it's not because this website's got prices on it, how much the links are. And so no, very much self-driven. Okay. Very cool. All right. Well, let's talk about some of the, the link building strategies that you have specifically. So I think... I'll just leave it open and you could talk about sort of your approach. Maybe you can uh, talk about a website where it's, it's one of yours, an example of like how you approach campaigns or something, or if a client shows up with a specific kind of website. So however you want to take the question, I'll just kind of lob it over to you and let you take it. Yeah, I mean, at the beginning, so it's all just outreach based, basically following, it's widely documented across the internet. You basically scrape your competitors, reach out on mass using Hunter. I don't even bother with high-tech tools like MailShake or anything like that, and just simple Gmail accounts. I was using the GMAS uh, warm-up tool at the time, which is now broken. It's been banned by Google, um, but still works without it. And yeah, just reach out on mass. You get people coming back, basically offering prices most of the time. Sometimes you can get away with a link swap or some sort of exchange, but even then it's still an exchange. I know people who build so-called white hat links. And they're normally exchanging some social media traffic or something like that. You think that's still a transaction. That's still not what Google wants you to do. So I've got nothing against paying for links. People get very emotional about it. And, but yeah, you can go to a proper digital PR company and do a reactive media campaign that gets you all this placement. There's still an element of payment transaction. They're still technically against Google's guidelines. And as we know, Google's guidelines very often don't weigh up with what's actually working in the search results. So I reach out on mess. And at the time, I actually met Mark Webster through a networking group from Authority Hacker. And by huge fortune, we were actually seated together at the dinner. And he just gave me so much advice in terms of basically not only the quality metrics, but basically how much to pay per link. Because the fact is, this webmaster coming back to you as, as two, three hundred dollars. Well, you can just go back to them and say, this is a five minute job for you. So if I give you one hundred dollars, are you really going to say no? And sometimes they do, but it's basically just scaling that and have to doing that for my own websites plus other clients just meant we could then do volume deals where, okay, we might get them down to one hundred per link, but if we're buying five, maybe we can get it down lower than that. 
But the main thing is then just this quality screening because there's no end of websites willing to link to you, especially for a fee. Uh, but how do you actually vet that and make sure that's going to be a good link rather than a bad link? Now, there is an element of fear mongering and basically a link building mafia going on where it's always my links are best, yours are terrible, and they're going to tank your website. And to an extent, that can be true. But again, it's an overplayed risk. And it just means most people don't even touch links and miss out on all that side. So basically, you're just going through each website with a fine tooth comb. Yeah, is the DR genuine or has it been manipulated? There's all sorts of tricks. I basically discovered for Tan doing this, where you look at the backlink profile. There's a trick called, uh, they call it the exploit strategy, where basically there's some websites that will, if you basically ping them, you'll get an automatic redirect to your site. And um, Google's actually really good for it. So some websites that are selling links, you can look at their backlink profile and they've got all these redirects coming from every single subdomain of Google. So different locations, images, maps, and it's basically a spam manipulation trick, but Ahrefs will totally blow up your DR if you do that. So we're looking out for things like that, Web 2.0 spam, all these redirects. Have they you know, coupled together 20, if I had to make one or two, that'd be okay, but not all these irrelevant ones smashed together. And then, then there's the traffic. We always say, you know, go for traffic, it's a sign of a good website. But you've got things like these Microsoft error codes, might be a load of ones and zeros. If you get that code on your PS4, you tend to Google it, so do millions of other people. There's no commercial value to that traffic. So if you're building one of these link farm sites deliberately for selling links with no value, then you can very easily get a huge amount of traffic just by targeting these. And I always find it funny, there's a search term, SEO company Primellis, and they're running some sort of CTR manipulation, some sort of fake traffic to inflate the search volume of that keyword. So if you look in a address, depending, uh, I think it's still going, this keyword will show as this unfeasibly high number of searches per month. So according to Ahrefs, the traffic's the ranking for this keyword are getting low traffic, <laughs> but you know, it's all manipulated data on both sides. Basically. And nice. so it's good quality websites, genuine traffic, genuine backlinks, and then find a good quality contextual place to put the link. So basically an aged post on the site. Sometimes we'll do a fresh article because then we can write it with Turfer, actually get that article ranking. And then that's a good quality link, simple as that. Just to get to briefly the other part of your question about how to start with a client, links are great and they're a transformation for me because I went from the sort of write great content and don't build links crowd to suddenly building links and ah, this really works. But of course, links don't work if your content isn't up to scratch. So in the agency, we actually make a point that we'll basically revamp your content for free. And if you're missing big topical gaps, they're also holding your back. It's also uh, in our interest to fix those as well. So typically in month one, we'll actually rewrite most of the site's content with a tool like Surfer, make sure the content is as good as it can be, as well as building the links. So that then three months down the line, that trap, that site then gets a massive explosion of traffic. A lot to unpack there. I'm going to hopefully kind of go in order for how you answered here. So you look at a couple kind of no brainer quality type things for the websites you're talking looking for, you know, weird spam redirects, you're looking for actual traffic, and you could probably double check and see, you know, what pages are getting traffic, or at least reportedly getting traffic from HRFs or some rush or whatever, and looking for any kind of exploits. Is there anything else from a quality standpoint? And do you have like a checklist where it's like some... We do. And I actually gave it away for free as a lead magnet. It's currently branded up for my old agency when I used to specialize in high ticket coaches. And that was the whole power lever method brand. So I'm just waiting to get that rebranded for the new SEO Jesus. And then that'd be going in my newsletter welcome sequence. And um, yeah, there's loads of good ones. So publicly available link pricing. You can normally find that if you see maybe three or four guest post links. If they're desperate to sell you a link, then always a bad sign when they've got top menu guest post right for us and then bottom menu guest post right for us. Outbound links are a good one I've been exploring a lot lately. So in the early days, I was finding I was often building a lot of links, but not actually getting much movement in DR. Now, DR is just a metric. I don't really care. I'm all about ROI and traffic. But even so, why is it that I built 10 links to this website and the DR has increased only by two, and then another site will increase by 10? And that basically comes down to bound links. Where, 
Uh, like I say, talking to big corporate agencies, you're having the account manager telling you this is a, they tend to use DA rather than DR. They'll say, this is a DA60 link from a news website. You think, right, but you look at the, the outbound things. How many websites is that site actually linking out to? Some of them are 50, 60, 70,000 outbound links. So the actual power you're getting from that so-called DR60 link is really heavily diluted. Whereas you might find some little mum blog that's only a DR of 30, and that's our minimum DR of 30. But if they're only linking out to 2,000, 3,000 websites, then you're going to get a lot more power from that. Mm -hmm. I study on my channel of arguably a PBN, but basically when I rebranded, uh, all my previous brands, I've been around a few different little side projects, other brands, and they're around DR 20, 30. And from things like working with this, being on a few podcasts. So not massive websites, but they had some standing. And when I launched SEO Jesus, I just linked to them from three of those websites, instant DR20. And that was just my illustration of how DR works. It can just be three links if those websites aren't linking out to anyone else. And they're so relevant too. It's like perfectly matched in the industry and topics and all that. Yeah. All right. Perfect. And you mentioned rewriting content when you maybe bring on a new client if it's not up to scratch, right? And you mentioned Surfer. I heard some chatter after the helpful content update that Google was perhaps targeting over-optimized content, right? So what, what's your opinion on that? Uh, I've heard good arguments to both sides. And my main projects at the moment tend to be more around parasite projects because like everyone else had a lot of websites hit. Uh, and the intriguing thing about that is, well, one thing is a lot of fun and you tend to get instant results. So what I tend to be doing at the moment is just slamming a LinkedIn article or a Medium article or something like that. And basically goes right to the top right away. So I don't think entities are really going away. And let's not forget, Surfer is not really considered the, the market leader. No, it's the most established, it's the easiest to use. But people tend to think the next level up is Page Optimizer Pro. And then if you're really advanced, the real techies go for Cora from Ted, Ted Kubotis, and which for those who don't know, basically gives you this massive spreadsheet. And my friend tried to walk me through it and I'm very grateful, but I think I'm just going to stick with Surfer. Um, but yeah, I think over-optimization, I don't really think is a big problem. I think anytime you get to that level of detail, you could just be one week away from a Google update that completely changes that precedent. So one week it might be over-optimization. Next week it's going to be under-optimization. Right. Um, and let's not forget, you know, the surfer post that you wrote six months ago, that search result is probably now very different. So it's probably not even over-optimized anymore. Very true. Yeah, I think the especially helpful content, there were a lot of fingers being pointed in multiple directions with examples to prove or disprove like any given area so no one we're all, yeah we're all really stuck and yeah even some of the biggest people in the industry were all looking at each other thinking have you fixed it yet <laughs> so far as yeah very limited it's really hard i think the best explanation was when i was in bangkok i was having drinks with gail breton the authority hacker and he basically said every now and then google blows up and gets it wrong you just said it's it's cyclical. It's like Bitcoin or even the financial markets. Where every couple of years we just have a bit of chaos, and then it sorts itself out. So there definitely is an argument that, and it makes sense that a lot of these sites should start to return in time. Um, but for the time being, it's Reddit and LinkedIn at the top. It's only in the last few weeks I've been able to crack that and actually make money from it. And at the moment, I'm enjoying it. So work out what's working right now and figure it out. Make it work. All right, well, let's shift into that a little bit. So we'll talk a little bit about changes in the affiliate site world. It sounds like you got some sites hit and then we'll we'll wrap up it towards the end just to let folks know about YouTube, which I love and personal branding. And I have really a passion for that. I guess I didn't realize it, but I really like helping people and I guess spreading the word like, hey, if you have a personal brand, you're somewhat immune to Google updates, algorithm updates, on maybe like short form social media and all that stuff, but we'll get to that in a second. So you had some sites hit. Can you share like a little bit about your portfolio and the impact from like helpful content and maybe some other updates from last year? 
Yeah, loads. I mean, if we go right to the beginning, that uh, men's grooming site, I basically I sold that probably about two years ago, and that basically bankrolled the start of my agency. Yeah. At the time, I was doing really well, constantly going up. Didn't do any of those just before I started the link building agency. And I basically went to Empire Flippers and said, it's been two months, I've done it in time. Could I actually take it off sale? Because I'd love to just hit it with all this link building I've been doing. Within 24 hours, offer came through, market price, 43x. Uh, done deal. So, uh, you know, pros and cons. And I kept on monitoring it, partly because the buyer actually said he'd be interested in my link building service. Uh, but I also just wanted to keep an eye on it because that buyer was you know, clearly collecting assets, but wasn't really actively working on it. So they said they changed the hosting, but I couldn't see anything change on the front end. Now, this website was entirely best X for Y content and reviews. So it completely went against the whole you should have 30% info, all those ratios. And at the time, that was basically my proof that a lot of what I've been told is wrong. I've got this purely commercial site, pure affiliate, and it's doing really well. Not anymore. And I've looked back since then, and it is completely tanked. And that could be for a variety of reasons, but I think that's one of them. And since then, I started a spirituality website. So that was a $7,000 expired domain from Odis. Uh, went all the way back to 1991. So it was a major authority at the time. And I actually had friends who were tarot readers. So I went to them and I said, you can basically be my writers. So I built a specialist, you know, high quality writing team, experts in the field, had all their, all their own EAT. So I did absolutely everything right. And that also got slammed. Um, more aggressive one, I had a dental site, basically selling invisible braces. That had a massive hit, uh, even before helpful content update. And clearly looked like a penalty of some sort, but we're not too sure what. So it could have been some sort of medic type update, something like that. But other players in the industry were still still ranking okay. And that did seem to reverse with the Google update. It started to pick up again, but nowhere near where it was. It was a perfect growth curve before that. Uh, so yeah, overall, lots of sites really damn. I've more recently been focusing on smaller sites, but higher ticket. And um, so they've steadily been growing, but equally at the same time, for those high ticket keywords, we're now seeing Reddit, LinkedIn above them. And I've just been playing around with those two over the last couple of weeks. And actually, I think I've made more money from that in the last few weeks than that website did in the last year. So we're all panicking about Reddit, LinkedIn, but actually, if you can crack it and make it work for you, it's actually a lot of fun and very profitable. So it's a big opportunity. I'm looking for someone who does Reddit affiliate marketing. So if you're out there or if you know anyone, Stuart, let me know, because I, I want to interview him and, and talk about it a little bit more, but there's not much content out there on it. If you just try to, to search like how to do affiliate marketing on Reddit, there's some generic bullshit and nothing, nothing helpful. Yeah, we're all a bit clueless. I mean, should I say his name? Yes, <laughs> James Dooley actually messaged me over the weekend and saying, yeah, how's this working for you and this and that. But it's interesting when you get up to a level and even the pros start you know, talking to you, basically saying, how's it working for you? Uh, no, I think the biggest guy in the niche is at the, the affiliate school. Uh, so he's done some good videos. He's done a course. Um, I did a couple of videos on it, just playing around. And I thought I was doing reasonably well at it. What I didn't realize was I'm actually the mastermind with someone who said he's got now 300 age Reddit accounts that he's using. So that's when I thought I was kind of ahead of the game, but apparently I'm not even trying. Right. That's funny. Man, that, that's a lot. And the thing is, well, I actually, he clicked on my affiliate link to buy the age Reddit accounts. So for about a week, I was getting some decent page check. <laughs> It's funny. Uh, yeah. And the thing is, like, if you could catch it early and know, like, very few people are doing it, even the experienced pros are still, like, trying to figure it out a little bit. They know there's something there. We could obviously use our skills from SEO and keyword research and other marketing, copywriting, whatever. But the nuts and bolts matter and you have to get some reps in. And if I was one of the first people doing it, I probably wouldn't be talking about it either. I would just be executing yeah. and doing, you know, learning more and earning money on it and then hoping it doesn't get too saturated. But yeah, I think it's kind so of exploding. Far, so far it's been really quite simple. So, and uh, that guy with the 300 accounts we're on, I didn't show up to that one, but there was a mastermind call where they're basically saying no one knows about it. And he said, 
I literally said that I'm using 300 accounts. And I thought, yeah, I've done like five YouTube videos on everything I do with it. And I think it's that thing that people, it's so simple that people don't trust it. Um, cause yeah, you're literally, it's still an SEO skill. You basically do a Google search for your niche Reddit, use the Ahrefs toolbar, find the, the subreddits, the posts, they're getting significant traffic. Some of them are getting thousands and then just click onto that Reddit, leave a comment that looks like a genuine user experience review. 24 hours later, you put in your affiliate link by which time the moderator has probably seen it and approved it. And then you go to upvote shop and buy a load of upvotes. You want 10 to 20% more than the top ranking comment. Now, so far, as you say, it's not being abused. So you can normally buy 20, 30 upvotes, which I think is less than $5 if I remember. Oh man. Okay. So a little homework assignment. So if, if I wanted to, uh, you know, check it out, like it sounds like I can get started in like a week or so for under a hundred bucks or something. Totally. So I'm using I'm up to, I've now bought a third uh, Reddit account, but before then I was just using two. If you're only using two, you can use the free version of ads power, which basically enables you to open separate windows for your proxies. The proxies are $3 US residential proxies. That's pretty much it. Obviously you need Ahrefs really to get an idea of the, the traffic volumes. Um, but otherwise, in addition to what I'm already doing, it's been really cheap. You cannot build a website for the same cost. Okay. That's well, the cool. thing is that sensor, does the conversion rate actually work? And just for my initial case studies, I was doing things like finding the best SEO agency and things like that. So I was being a bit dubious saying, oh, I really recommend SEO Jesus. He's great. I got the best links in the world. And you couldn't really make, make it up. I didn't really didn't push this, but I got an inquiry through at the weekend saying, what do you reach out? I'm interested in your services. I've heard great things about you on Reddit. Not okay. Well, what? Yeah. Okay. So people can do some stuff with that. Um, any, any other tips on Reddit so far? And I'm basically going to chat GPT and basically trying to train it based on question and what the other comments are saying. And I'm trying to go for long form answers. Because not only is that better for conversion rate to actually encourage a sale. And also what everyone else does is they put the brand name in. Whereas just like with your website, you don't put the brand name in because then they go away and Google it. Just put in, I recommend this product and make that the link. And, and that way it sparks that curiosity. It's like, well, I need to know what the product is. Then you've got this long form answer, which not only sells to the person, but actually it pushes everyone else further down as well. Yep. And Taking up that step, real estate. Exactly. The next thing I want to try is basically getting a load more accounts and you can basically get all your accounts commenting on each other. So they're saying, yes, I clicked on this link. Highly recommend it. It was really good. Okay. How long do you think that'll work and last? <laughs> uh, short term. I do not see it as a feasible long term business model. So that's why I'm generally going, some people are using it for Amazon. I wouldn't bother with that unless it's extremely high volume. So generally I'm doing either high ticket or recurring. Okay. Gotcha. And th that makes a lot of sense too. Cause I was thinking on the Amazon side, like you can't really put your links in directly. I'm pretty sure they don't want you putting your links in Reddit. It does people, it's so easy to scrape competitors on Reddit as well. You can see when people are doing this and reverse engineer them. So they're using Genius Link, which obviously has been around for ages. So I'm not sure if that's got some sort of cloaking that stops Amazon from seeing it from Reddit. Um, okay. It's good. High ticket's good. So software works pretty well on there, in which case, if I can refer enough people, get up to $500,000 a month, something like that, then they open six months and some good mailbox money. Right. And actually, I'm, you know, you mentioned Genius Link. I'm friends with the, one of the, the founders there. I've interviewed him a bunch of times, Jesse Lakes. Um, and just thinking about it, like it, it could be considered like a kind of social media. Like we could put genius links, uh, in, in our website, of course, but we could put it on like YouTube. You could put it in social media. So there, it could potentially be considered like a social media play. And although Amazon, they, they really, they really don't love us overall so i i don't know people do your own research talk to your own lawyer all right <laughs> awesome anything else in the the parasite area you mentioned linkedin a couple times how's that working out really well so i'm at an interesting um interesting juncture here because 
I'm basically trying to work out which is better, Reddit or LinkedIn. Fact is, it doesn't really matter because they both only take 10 minutes of work to do. So I was doing most of this testing towards the end of January. So I had a guy basically constantly uploading content to my LinkedIn. I found out you need to be careful with that because you will blow up your LinkedIn account. Now I was using my personal one, so I just verified the passport is fine. I got it back. If you're using an aged one, then that's already been suspended after just a couple of articles. So I think you can get around that with LinkedIn premium. So I probably, that's my next test, basically buy an aged account. They do exist. And then buy premium for that account. Then, so yeah, a couple of weeks ago, basically spamming LinkedIn with all this content, taking off really nicely, did a load of case studies, basically, again, just manipulating that AHS graph. Here's how I got 50,000 traffic per month with a 10 minute AI article. Uh, also I'm using autoblogging.ai's God mode, which basically extracts the entities from your competitors. So it's like Surfer, except you don't even need to do the right thing. It just fits out an optimized article and it ranks really well. And basically for the last two weeks, I've been away in the U S and I had a heavy metal cruise from Florida to the Dominican Republic. And even for someone of our standing, going to Miami and going on a cruise is not cheap. And there's always the sense when you're paying. $20 $20 for a cocktail and $30 for a pizza is a bit uncomfortable. But I was checking my inbox, just getting this stream of commissions in that were literally covering my expenses as I was incurring them. So, and that was all from LinkedIn. Well, at first I thought it was from LinkedIn. If I now look back, it's actually a combination of LinkedIn and Reddit. So basically the main problem I found with LinkedIn uh, is longevity. So I did the case study, LinkedIn basically for my cruise holiday. That was great. And, but what you find is you get this big spike for the recent traffic and then it drops off very quickly. And the problem with all parasite SEO is anyone can come along and basically cannibalize your keywords. So whoever gets the most recent article, thank God it's a LinkedIn and not a $500 Outlook India post because whoever's the most recent tends to get the bonus. So what I've seen some people do is constantly re-upload the same content, basically lightly rewritten. That's one method. The experiment I'm trying at the moment is, can we beat them with sheer authority? So I basically had a, so one of my profitable pages and it's on an AI based keyword. Now I've got an AI based domain name I got from Odis in 2021. So three years old and obviously had a history before that. The DR about 30, I never really used it. I wanted to promote copywriting software back when it was just emerging, like Jasper, Jarvis, et cetera. Never really got that project off the ground. So I thought, I'm going to take this $2,000 expired domain name and redirect it at this one LinkedIn post. And we're going to see if that actually keeps that LinkedIn page stuck at the top of Google and stops competitors from getting in the way. Because the beauty of that is, if I then do need to re-upload the content, I can just update the redirects. It's not like a link building campaign where I'm building all these links, spending thousands of dollars to a page where I can't then change the destination of those links. Man. That's really cool. And it it sounds like you're promoting like the same affiliate promotions on Reddit and LinkedIn because you've identified those as like well converting and good products or something. That's the thing, mate. I am terrible. I'm very lazy with tracking. And then I get great results. I was like, not measured this. So I don't know what's with. I thought for this offer and that was paying for my holiday, I thought LinkedIn was doing really well. And it was. But actually, if I go into the affiliate platform, it does allow me some insight of the, the referrals. And obviously the top one is unknown because you can't track everything perfectly. And there's a split between LinkedIn and Reddit. And it's one of these, I think it might be first promoter, one of those where you don't really get a graph. It just gives you the numbers. So literally over the last couple of days, I've been screenshotting that to try and work out uh, how quickly are each of these increasing. Is Reddit pacing LinkedIn on the clicks, the signups and the sales? Because ever since I did that redirect, I was making maybe $30, $40 per day on that particular product. That's now gone up to $100 per day. So this is job replacement, three grand a month money here. So serious stuff. And at first I thought it was LinkedIn and the redirect, but it looks like it might be because my Reddit comment is now at the top and Reddit page is getting 20,000 visitors per month. So I'm keeping an eye on those metrics. I think Reddit might now be catching up and actually be more responsible for that doubling of the commission. Okay. Interesting. So will you do more tracking or is that your thing? Yeah, it's, it's time I did it. And the great thing about Reddit and LinkedIn is you can just go in and edit it. 
I think the problem with Parasite a year or two ago, where it was all expensive, Outlook India, G Post, all those is the article goes up and then it's gone. If you want to edit it, they're going to charge you for it. Whereas, yeah, Reddit, LinkedIn, just go in, update the tracking. So that'll be the, the next step, I think. That's the end of part one with Stuart. So if you're interested in hearing about YouTube and personal branding and what Stuart's doing over there, be sure to check out part two. And of course, I'll link up for all the things that you want to check out from Stuart. SEO Jesus, really cool branding. All his thumbnails have a very particular style, you know. They're really eye-catching. Anyway, it's good branding. And if you have a second, if you want to help me out, you can leave a review. You can make sure you're subscribed wherever you're consuming this content. If you're over on YouTube, leave comments. And another, you know, big help would be if you download all of the episodes to help boost the downloads. And I hope we'll get some information from the directories, right? Hopefully that'll show us ranking a little higher, maybe on Apple or on Spotify, and it'll be suggested more. And we'll, I'll, I'll let you know what happens because I don't know what will happen, but I'm going to try to, in air quotes, manipulate the downloads as much as possible. Don't tell anybody at Apple, please. And that's it for today. Have a great day and we'll catch you on the next episode.